name's Harry and I work at HJ Gentleman in East Grinstead. So I've been barbering for eight years this year. I went down kind of an old school route of standing behind a chair, watching other people do it and picking something up different from every single barber in that shop. Uh, Socialising with people, it's a job that when people ask, I just say I stand around and talk all day. That all depends on where you're from really, what area of the country you're working in. Haircuts vary from, you'll find a barber shop that charge five pound for a haircut, you'll find one that charges 50 pound plus. The potential of uh, earning a good living is good. It's definitely um, you know, a survivable wage. I've got four, five people working for me now, that all earn a living from barbering. I personally have always worked as self-employed and I, my staff are all self-employed also. Um, I've not got any experience with salaries. Ups and downs, if you're having a down day then you shouldn't be a barber. It's always, as long as you've got good people in the shop, customers coming in through the door doing good haircuts, every day is an up day. The, the public are always varied. Um, and they will bounce off you. So if you're having a good day, they'll get that vibe. If you're not, you'll end up with some miserable people. So the longevity, like I said, there's a career in it. If you enjoy doing it, you can do it for the rest of your life. If you're willing to put in the work and you've got the people coming in, then the harder you work, the bigger the reward. personality, makes a good barber, uh, determination, techniques and skill are definitely up there. Um, I would say they almost come second to the personality. So when I recruit staff, I always do a trade test with them. I will see exactly what they can do and watch over that haircut. Um, I may ask them back in to do another haircut again just so I can see different things, different styles and then I'll interview them and see if I like them. We've got to work together full time so we've got to, you've got to uh, enjoy the people you work with. No matter what barber shop you go in, you're always going to be able to learn something more from the other barbers that are in there. So if somebody isn't 100% up to scratch, that wouldn't necessarily make me not take them on if I see they have potential and the willingness to do it. Client care is so important because that's, at the end of the day, what's going to bring the customer back to you. We now are in a time where there are 10 barber shops in every town, and if you can give the best customer service as well as the best haircut, that's what's going to win them back. Uh, to build a client base, you just need to be, be who you are and get to know people, get to know that customer, they'll get to know you, give them a story, because if they're uh, coming back to find out that next part of the story, that's really, that's really key. Social media building a client base is important. If you can be updating it at least once a day, um, just showing people what you can do, what you've done, what's happening in the shop, even if you're having a quiet day, put something up, put an old photo up because it's vital that you keep at the top of everybody's news feed so that you're not forgotten. It was a real honour to be a judge today at LSB. Uh, I've really enjoyed my time here. It was my first experience actually being here. I have uh, taken on um, a guy that previously did the course which is what made me look them up and find out a bit more about them and then that is where I ended up uh, becoming a judge. The quality of the cuts, at first I was skeptical about you know, what could be achieved in nine weeks and like I say, from taking on somebody that did exactly that, went from being a builder to being a barber, it's possible as long as you're going to put in the work. I think LSP is great. Uh, like I said, from zero to 
zero to full barber, that you'll be able to go and get a job. I think you could stand a trade test and you would be successful in finding a job. Um, I think, yeah, the educators definitely are definitely there to push you. And I'm sure that if you're showing the willingness and want to be pushed more, they'll push you more. Um, if you're not going to put in the effort, then you will get something from it, definitely, and you'll be able to cut hair, but you're not going to be winning the fade competition at the end. This is an interesting one. So the future of barbering, um, I think it could go two ways. It's growing at such a pace at the moment, and like we see with fashions and styles going in and out, it's happened before where barbering has dropped to the wayside, and we're seeing a huge build in it back now. And there's always the potential that that could happen again. Not everybody's gonna want a skin fade in three years time. The fashion could be different. Hopefully we've developed our skills enough to be able to keep people coming back and offer them exactly what they want, rather than just a basic haircut. London's the hub of fashion, so the styles that the Londoners bring to barbering um, is huge. There are so many different styles now. People are asking for different things. You can do a day where you don't do two of the same haircuts. So it's, it's great, the diversity. With fashion, anything goes now. And like you say, the, the fashionable loops that happen, that we see come and go, are getting tighter. And as long as you've got the confidence to carry a style, it's gonna be fashionable.